What is up guys, welcome back to another video. So I know I haven't posted on YouTube in two months, but one of my videos, how I became successful in 34 days, is still getting consistent views every single day, and it's almost at 750,000, and I have been getting a lot of people in my DMs on Instagram, I've been getting a lot of comments on my videos asking about dropshipping and asking all these questions because so many new people are coming into this business, so I thought that I would make a video basically following up that video, um, breaking down dropshipping in late 2019 and early 2020, um, a bunch of things you should know, you know, things that you should avoid, things that you should pay attention to, and I even have examples of winning products that I personally saw someone scale to um, over half a million dollars in, in what I've calculated last month, which I'm gonna give you at the end of the presentation. So this won't be a super long video, but just kind of a follow up for all the beginners and all the new people that are coming onto the channel that have questions about dropshipping and that just you know wanna get those questions answered. They wanna know what to focus on more than anything and what to do. So let's just get started. I'm not gonna ramble to you guys for a long time. Um, obviously we have our first slide here and the first thing that we have is, is it a good time to start? And I know that that's the first question a lot of people ask me, is dropshipping saturated right now in 2019? Is it too late to do it? Is Facebook too competitive? The answer is no. Uh, people move in and out of dropshipping every single day. Um, just like real estate, just like jobs, people lose their jobs every day and people get jobs every day. And there's millions of people that go through this cycle and come in and out of this bubble every single day. And it's no different with dropshipping. Um, people start dropping shipping and they can't seem to make money so they leave or say people make a lot of money drop shipping and then you know they keep going and they keep going and then they take that money and then they decide to start a brand and then they don't drop ship it anymore or they, you know maybe they put it in real estate um, but either way whether you make a lot of money whether you don't make a lot of money people will move in and out of this industry and eventually I will stop drop shipping as well and eventually probably all of the youtubers that you know on drop shipping will eventually probably stop drop shipping as well so everybody moves in out uh, everybody moves in and out and that gives space for other people um, another thing is since um, I'm filming this in August late August so it's already towards the end of the year and the end of the year is better for drop shipping because people buy more products during the end of the year it's q4 um, sales online and everywhere really just increase and skyrocket so if you're going to start it would be a good idea to start now because it's kind of easier to sell products um, and you could just kind of get into it and get the the you know get into the groove of selling products and online. So moving on to the next question is budget. What is the budget to start drop shipping? So obviously the more money you have, the better. Um, but I broke it down just a little bit. So as you can see, I have $250 for Shopify for like the plan, um, depending on what plan you choose for the apps that you'll be needing. So you're going to need upsell apps. You're going to need like apps for reviews, um, pricing apps, stuff like that. Um, and those are charged monthly and then design work. So if you're going to pay someone to design your logo, if you're going to pay someone to even work on your store, if you're going to pay someone to do this or that for you, then that's going to cost some money too. Then I have a thousand plus for ad testing. So I personally like to spend money on ads. And when I start a new store, for example, I probably won't even be profitable for the first week because I'm spending a lot of money on ads in the beginning. And basically like, you should have more money for ads, right? So that kind of leads me into the next point, which I don't remember if I added it. Maybe I did, actually I did right here, yeah. So I'll talk about it later, but yeah, at least have a thousand plus for advertising. Um, the more you have, the better, because you could just get more data and uh, and learn more about Facebook and the platform and how it works. Um, then I have YouTube videos are free. So if you're on a budget and you don't have a lot of money um, and you're thinking about buying a course, which is something I'll talk about in the next slide, um, watch YouTube videos. Watch a lot of YouTube videos first before you buy any course before you buy any mentorship before you do any sort of you know mentoring or help from anyone watch a ton of YouTube videos because there are a ton a ton of free videos on the internet that give you a lot of information more than enough information to make money more than enough information to make thousand dollar days in my opinion I've seen I've personally seen videos that could get beginners to a thousand dollars a day um, and I'll tell you who who posted those videos and I'll direct you in that direction right right after now um, then I have LLC and other fees come later so a lot of people ask questions about LLCs or hiring an accountant or doing all that um, if you're a beginner you don't have to worry about it um, you should just focus on finding a good product and starting to get sales and if you get a sale if you get a product you know five to ten thousand dollars revenue then you can start worrying about uh, an LLC and all that stuff but you should make a bank account before then um, I would just make a bank account right now if you're gonna plan on drop shipping just go and make a separate bank account get a credit card put whatever your budget is in that bank account so say it's two grand put two grand in that bank account and then just work out of that bank account so that everything is separated you know business from personal and it's a lot easier but 
LLC and uh, the accounting and all those other fees you can worry about a little bit later. Don't put them off, but just focus on getting sales first. That's more important. Um, then I have $500 for custom content. So if you have more of a budget and you want to just really do it, you know, you want to go like, be, if you want to be an overachiever the first time around, then you could pay an agency um, and send them your product if you think your product is, is winning and they can make custom videos for you and custom content pictures and videos with their models or whatnot. Mm -hmm. So I added that in there in case some of you had more of a budget and you wanted custom content and you didn't want to do it yourself um, so that you guys can have that. So moving on, where do you learn? Dropshipping. So like I said, YouTube is always first. It's free and if you can get anything for free, that's the best way to do it time and time again. So YouTube is first. Um, then in bold, I have here golden ticket syndrome. So for those of you that don't know what golden ticket syndrome is, that basically means that um, somebody advertises like like a golden ticket, like to the Charlie factory. Sorry, I'm gonna turn off my phone. Um, like to the Charlie factory, everybody wanted the golden ticket because they knew that if they had the golden ticket, their life would change forever. Um, and so some people have this golden ticket syndrome with courses and mentorship, and they think that if they just spend the money on this course, then the course, all the information in them is, is gonna get them to like, you know, 10K a day uh, or whatever, they're gonna start profiting thousands of dollars uh, like their first month. So that's golden ticket syndrome. Um, and that's that's something that you wanna watch out for because every single course is different and different information resonates differently with different people. So some courses can be better for you, other courses can be worse for you. Uh, and the thing is, is you don't really know because you don't know what kind of person you are and you don't know what kind of information you learn best with. But um, don't just buy a course because you think it's gonna make you money. Buy a course because you do research on it and it has good reviews and you you know you've seen the person that you're buying it from before whatever just be careful with the golden ticket syndrome i don't want to talk about it forever so moving on to some people that i personally like and trust gabriel saint germain is amazing his videos are great he knows what he's talking about he's had a few stores and he's scaled them uh he's friends with some of my friends some of my students actually um, and he's just, he definitely knows what he's talking about. So he has my credibility. Beast of Ecom, great guy, definitely knows what he's talking about a lot. He's scaled to crazy numbers. I think he scales over a million a month before. Um, so also go check him out, Beast of Ecom. And then Ari, obviously, you guys know who Ari is. Ari, I don't really know, I don't want to butcher his last name. It's like Sutcherson or something like that. Um, his videos are good. I like his videos. And obviously myself, um, I think I have pretty good videos. But So anyway, moving on, uh, tests. I have here tests with free info. If you can't figure it out uh, and have extra money, get a course or help. So basically go on YouTube, get, you know, read blogs if you have to, do Google searches, try it out for yourself. Just learn with Facebook, right? Just learn with Facebook. And if you can't seem to figure it out, uh, you know, maybe two, three months in, you've spent like a thousand dollars and like you, you can barely generate any sales and you don't know what's going on, then maybe it's time for you to go to course um, and try to get some of that information that people put in uh, and charge for because it's better information than the one they just put on the internet. So, but definitely test free. And, and another thing I wanna add before I go on to the next slide is um, a lot of people spend money with the with the intention of making money and as a beginner that's not the right thing to do because you're such a beginner and it's obvious that you're doing so many things wrong so many things wrong in the beginning um so it's not going to make sense for you to just make money like that like that's it's like going to be almost impossible like it happens but it's rare so what you should be spending your money on with the intention of getting is is knowledge and learning so when you're on facebook don't just you know, create a campaign and be like, okay, hopefully this gets me a sale. And if it doesn't, I'm shutting it off. No, don't do that. Let the campaign run, let it do its thing. If don't give it a crazy budget, if you can't afford it, but just learn how Facebook runs ads, learn how Facebook delivers ads, you know, create a campaign with one ad set. Uh, and then throw an ad set in there. And then after two days, see what happens in the price. You know, don't touch it at all. Even after three or four days, if you're even giving it five bucks a day, see what happens to the price, see what happens to the campaign and study it. Then maybe you can start doing other things like adding different ad sets and adding different ads inside each ad set and see how that affects the campaign. Um, but anything you do, just give it at least two days of time before you can make like a, a reliable decision on it because Facebook has to adjust to the, um, to the change that you made to the campaign. So that's what I mean, my, what I mean by that is don't just spend with the intention of getting money in the beginning um, because you don't know what you're doing. Spend with the intention of learning 
uh, and then take that knowledge and then apply it. And then eventually, as you get more knowledge, you can spend with the intention of getting money. So moving on, what to expect. Break even or negative for the first few weeks or months until you start to understand marketing angles and the right kind of ads and how to pick the right kind of product. So dropshipping is a skill, you get better at it, um, and it's always changing. So if you're a beginner and you're watching my videos for the first time, do not expect to be profitable right away. It has happened before. I've seen it happen to a few people. Um, it's happened to me. I was profitable my first month, but it's very rare and it's getting rarer. So even now when I start a store with Facebook ads only, um, I'm usually break even or even negative for the first week uh, until I get my data and find out who my audience is and then I scale it up. Um, and the reason I was profitable back when I first started dropshipping like two years ago almost was because I was doing influencers and influencers were so untapped. I was not doing Facebook when I started. So. That's something you should know. Uh, moving on, changing things daily, frustration and problem solving. That's something you should expect. Um, you will literally run into every single problem that you can possibly imagine. Ask me, ask anyone you know, ask any YouTuber, any influencer, they're going to say the same thing. Dropshipping and any business is literally your job is to solve problems. That's it. There's like, there's gonna be so much that doesn't work and it's your job to find out how to fix it and how to find things that work and make them work better. And that's it. It's very frustrating. It requires a lot of problem solving. It's not like somebody's telling you what to do, you know, like fill out this report or, you know, you know, do this sort of presentation or do research on this topic. It's not someone telling you what to do. It's you having to come up with a solution on your own and using your own brain to come up with the best solution and the most efficient solution. Um, and it's very frustrating and it takes a lot of time until you get good at it and you get good at problem solving. But like I said, it's super frustrating. Um, only people with a good amount of experience get stores to 10 to 30K in a few weeks profitably. So you've probably seen this on YouTube and Instagram. People are flexing half a million a month, you know, 10K a day, five days in, 30K a day, 40K a day, 100K a day. Um, and do not expect yourself to get those numbers as a beginner. That is completely outra outrageous because you are not gonna get anywhere near those numbers as a beginner because you have no idea what the fuck you're doing. Um, and this is something that kind of gets me mad because a lot of people DM me and say, dude, I've been dropshipping for one week and I'm not even profitable. I'm like, bro, I've been dropshipping for two years and I can start a store right now and in the first week I'm not profitable on the store. Like, you guys are crazy. So. Do not expect something crazy. This is not a get rich quick scheme. This is a literal business that you're starting online. Um, and starting a business is hard. It's very hard. So do not expect 10 to 30K days. Is it possible? Absolutely. And do you have to be doing it for years? Not at all. It just, it's all about the experience you have and the knowledge you have. And for me, you know, for some people it could take years to get there and for some people it could take um, months to get there if they learn fast and they have a lot of money and they have a great mentor, they could do it in six months, you know, eight months. That's totally fine. It's not about how long you do it. It's about what you know um, and how fast you can, you can catch on and how smart you are really at the end of the day. Um, if you have a job or any source of income, income, keep that source of income or job while you do this because you will be spending money and um, you will need more money. So just keep your job, don't quit yet. Don't quit until you're making a lot of money. Um, and again, this might not be for you and that's totally okay. If it's not, you can go and move on to something else, a different type of business maybe, or you know, just anything online if you wanna do it. But if you can't deal with problems every single day, um, and you get frustrated easily and you wanna give up after two weeks, then maybe it's just not for you. So moving on, I'm gonna to try to talk a little bit faster, maybe not talk so much because I still have a lot of slides, but now we're gonna get into some general tips for 2019 that you guys have to do. So first things first, you have to use an agent if you're going to be drop shipping um, and if you're getting orders every single day. So um, what an agent is, is basically when you use an agent, it's somebody in China that maybe has their own warehouse and they could get products from the big manufacturers cheaper uh, and stored in their warehouse and then they can fast lane send it to the United States. So what that does is it decreases the price of all the products and it increases the shipping, I mean it decreases the shipping time, sorry. So ePacket was 12 to 20 days. Using an agent, you can get anywhere from five to 12 days. It depends on the agent. My agent gets me like five to eight day shipping to the United States. And also my agent gets me about 60 to 80% of the alley price. Sometimes even lower than that. Sometimes I've gotten like 50% of the alley price. And what I mean by that is, say something is on AliExpress for $30, ePacket, you know, five bucks to ship it. Uh, 12 to 20 days, so total $35, 12 to 20 days shipped. Um, using an agent, I would get it for $15, five to 12 days shipped. Um, so obviously that's a no brainer. 
Um, and that's something that is happening more and more as dropshipping is evolving. Um, agents are, are coming out of, you know, everywhere to, to do that. Um, another thing is that you get to work on issues directly with the agent. So you could talk to them on Skype um, and you don't, you know, it's like so much easier than trying to contact a supplier because first of all, they can barely speak English. And most of these agents know what they're talking about. So it's much easier than just working off AliExpress. Um, and overall, you just it's a no-brainer to use an agent once you're getting sales. If you're not making any sales or if you're testing a product, don't use an agent. Only use an agent if you are already selling or you know it's selling and you just want to make everything cheaper. Um, so, can find on Upwork or use mine if you have 30 plus orders per day. So you could find agents on Upwork very easily. Just type in dropshipping agent. Maybe I'll make a separate video on how to contact agents if you guys want one. But um, yeah, finding them on Upwork is super easy. People will just respond to you. You'll get a bunch of requests in like the first few days. And like, it's crazy how cheap they can get products. Um, you could use mine if I, if you have 30 plus orders per day. So mine won't work with you unless you're already making money because he doesn't want to waste his time. So if you do have, if you are making 30 plus orders per day, you can send me a DM on my Instagram. It's at Seb and maybe I can set you guys up. Uh, moving on Facebook practice CBOs more. I, f I have a feeling that Facebook is just trying to, um, use CBOs more and to prioritize CBOs and to really just let Facebook run its own ads instead of people having so much influence, like in terms of narrowing down and doing all of that stuff and targeting. Um, because at the end of the day, Facebook knows who to target better than any of us do. Um, so practice using CBOs more, which is campaign budget optimization. Go watch some videos on it. Uh, another thing that people really don't talk about that I have come across lately and, and I preach it now is test creatives. Um, and let me explain to you why. So say for example, you run a Facebook ad and you have one single ad and you test 10 interests and that's how you start. Um, essentially, you have no idea if, if that ad resonates with any of the 10 audiences that you created and, and you're, you're trying to force that, 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 in, um, the creative to win. So the example I use is imagine that you put a blindfold on and someone walks you into a room and on one side of the wall, there's a shop or like a, a Sharpie and there's a dot on the wall and you have a dart and you're blindfolded and you're supposed to throw it and hit that, that little dot on the wall. What are the chances that you're going to get that? And that's kind of the way that it is. If you're just testing one single creative with all these different audiences, that's, that's what you're doing. You're blindfolded because you don't know how many different options there are. And you're essentially trying to force that one creative to win, which most of the time doesn't win. So test more creatives, have three completely separate videos, have five completely separate videos. Test those first, then find a clear winner or find two winners, then take those two winners and test the first three to five seconds, then take those, you know, the first three to five seconds and then test, you know, the ad copies instead of doing a sale, do like a giveaway, uh, do like a testimonial, do this. And then you could even play with the thumbnail. You could even change the offer. But my point is test creatives literally for a week. Um, test as many creatives as you can to try to find three to five very, very, very good winning creatives. Uh, and that's very, very important and not a lot of people do it. Um, and that will overall just decrease your cost of purchase and everything else. Uh, ads that should have two to four good creatives, some of which are testimonial creatives. So um, back in the day when I ran Facebook ads, my ad sets only had one ad. Now they have at least four, like three to four. And out of the, some of those four, is it's going to be like a sale, like a viral sale, get it today, this percentage off. It's going to be a testimonial. I just got this. Uh, for somebody X or I just got this and I'm satisfied some sort of testimonial with stars in the actual ad copy um, And just different types of creatives so that Facebook can see those ads and really they have more options to deliver it to because honestly say for example you're testing um, Headphones, right? And that's a 50 million dollar 50 million people audience. It's huge uh, and you give it one ad to show to all these different different types of people. Um, it's just not going to perform as well as if you gave Facebook three ads and Facebook, you know, when deciding who to show it to, they said, okay, this person is this type of way, which ad out of the three is most competitive for this type of person? Oh, the testimony. Okay. We're going to show them the testimony. So ever since I've implemented this into my stores and my ads, I've noticed my cost per purchase goes significantly down. Um, and I've noticed that the ads get a mix of purchases and overall it's more stable and it's a lower cost per purchase must, must do this. Very important. Um, do not attempt to scale vertically in, until you have consistent data. I noticed that people talk about scaling all the time and they're like, okay, as soon as you get fucking three row ads, you can start increasing the budget. No, do not increase the budget at all until you have identified a, you know, like five to 10 clear, clearly winning audiences. 
Um, and when I mean winning is they are consistently profitable over the span of three, three to five days. They consistently bring you a profitable ROAS. Um, and they have at least, you know, a, a set of, of conversion events. So if you're going for purchases, at least, you know, some people say five, some people say 10, even more, you know, 15, but maybe 10 is a good spot because it's in the middle, um, but at least 10 purchases and at least a profitable ROAS in the span of three to five days. Um, if you do not have an audience like that, do not even attempt to increase the budget because it's just, it, you know, it's not proven to be a winning audience. You're just lucky. You're just getting purchases. Um, run a PPE along scale campaign for better CPM. So for the um, <clears throat> for the creatives that I scale for my winning creatives, I run a PPE so that I can get more engagement on that on that ad. And um, what that does is it lowers the CPM because um, Facebook does give a lower CPM and it does award creatives that um, resonate better with audiences because if say for example, someone else is competing with me and they have a uh, ad that people don't like as much and it's not driving as much engagement versus mine, Facebook will push mine more because Facebook wants the people on Facebook to be happy. So run a, um, run a PPE alongside your scale campaign. Also, don't run PPE to cheap countries. This is a mistake that I've even said in the past and I've changed my mind about it. Some people say this, other people don't. People say that if you run PPE to India, you get a bunch of free traffic and a bunch of free social proof. Don't run cheap traffic because essentially in the future, if you want to create, um, you know, if you want to create look like audiences based on that data, it's not going to work and it's not going to be good. And plus you don't want that engagement. You want good engagement, not shitty engagement in different languages, because even if people see your ad and they're thinking about buying it and they see shitty engagement versus good engagement, good engagement is always going to resonate better with them. So just don't run it to cheap countries. It's going to be more expensive. Who cares? It's it's better in the long run. It's better for your ad. It looks better and you can actually use the data in the future. Instagram, use influencers if you can find cheap prices. I know influencers are kind of going, you know, outdated, but not really. I mean, it wasn't as easy as it used to be, but use influencers if you can find a good deal. I personally use influencers for content and social proof. I have a very, very like brandish product like it's private labeled and I'm very focused on it and I have ambassadors for it <clears throat> and I use influencers for social proof obviously this depends on the product you know you're not going to use influencers if you have uh, if you're selling a smart bed that doesn't make any sense or if you're selling like a magnet of some sort it's not going to make sense to have you know like ambassadors as influencers um, so just keep that in mind uh, TikTok for those of you that don't know is a video app where people make funny videos like Vine I use TikTok um, to find influencers and girls to promote my products because they're very new to their fame and they don't, you know, they don't really know how to charge or how to make money. So I can kind of set them up uh, and say like, hey, I'm going to give you a percent of every sale that you bring in. And they make a little bit of money. I get social proof and the audience is very fresh and new. So TikTok is a great place for influencers. Um, Google, you can run basic Google ads to your domain, something I learned from Gabriel, so that when people search for your store, you are first in the ad. Um, and even if like, say for example, the main product on your store, even if they um, search for that, your ad will pop up if you're giving it enough budget, obviously. But more importantly, if someone searches for your store, if someone sees your ad and they don't trust your ad and they go on Google and search for your store and it's not there, you just lost a customer and someone just gained a customer um, if they like the product. But if your ad is there and they see the connection there between the ad and the, the thing, it looks good. It looks more like a legit company. Um, and overall, it's something that you should really do um, because you don't have to spend a lot of money and it could potentially generate you a lot of money. Um, and it's something that I just started implementing and I've seen some pretty cool results with it too. So moving on. Upsell products, um, upsell warranties or anything else that you can actually provide. Do not upsell something that you cannot provide. Do not upsell gift wrapping if you can't gift wrap your products um, because it looks bad and it's slimy and you don't want to do that. Um, but warranties, if you can provide your warranty, for example, I have a product I get for 80 cents um, and I sell warranty for a dollar fifty so if someone buys a warranty it makes sense um, and I could provide the warranty to them twice uh, but most of the time they won't even need the warranty because it's a good product so it's just extra money for me um, and extra security for them and if they ever want to use it there they can totally use it and I will totally provide the warranty that they bought so it's a win-win um, similar products people may like just to increase your average order value um, because Facebook is getting more competitive. This is an obvious, you should just do this anyway, not because Facebook is getting more competitive, but yeah, uh, increased AOV, CPMs get higher in Q4. So that just means that ads are gonna get more expensive in Q4 because more companies are running ads. 
Um, ideas, use what's currently working. Turbo Ad Finder is an extension. You could use it on Facebook and it only shows you sponsored posts, sponsored feed posts on Facebook. So you can just go through a crap ton of ads. Um, every five stories, if you're swiping on Instagram, is an ad. So you can send that to yourself or to a friend. Uh, check out their website, add to cart, and then you'll get retargeted You know, um, for every dropshipping store that you see. Similar web extension. Um, so this is an extension on Google Chrome again where you can track visits. Um, this is a particular product I'm gonna actually talk to you guys about when I said the half a million dollars that they made or some, that's what I, I estimated. This is their, their site. So as you can see, they scaled it. And in February, they were getting about 200,000 visits. And then it went down to like maybe 190,000 in March. April, they went up to almost 400K. May, they scaled it hardcore to 600 plus thousand. And then they scaled it back down. So you can estimate that for every session, um, people got about a dollar depending on the product. It's just an estimation. It's not incredibly accurate. It just depends. But I'm going to overestimate. So in that case, this store, this general store right here is getting 227,000 visits a month. We can estimate that they're making at least 200K uh, unless they're running stupid PPE, which obviously they're not. It's a general store. Um, they are making good money. I personally saw how many clicks their ad got and I will show you that in just a second, so be patient. But you could estimate that on an average month they'll probably make almost a quarter million dollars, which is crazy. Um, things you should be focused on um, in, this is actually in order of importance. Um, product, by far the most important, no questions asked. Um, the product is always, always, always gonna be the most important thing. And if you have a shitty product, you can do everything else right and you won't make profit. And if you have a, a fucking amazing product and you're doing everything else shitty, you can make money. So. Product is number one. Then your creatives, which is your, your ads, your copies, your marketing angles, and how you're reaching your customers for the first time, and your content. So custom content is key. It's very necessary if you're gonna be building a, a one product brand store, which is what dropshipping is kind of going to right now. So custom content is key. Order your product, make your own videos, pay people to make your own videos, get custom content. Then next store, make sure your store resonates with the ad, make sure it's, it's um, what's the word I'm looking for? Everything is like a, like a balance, like a line. Like there's not like some sort of huge disconnect. Like if you see like a very influencer type of Instagram page where it's like some sort of filter and some sort of theme, when you go on the, the store, it should be the same vibe. It shouldn't be like black and red, you know? Um, moving on customer service. Um, I think that a lot of people don't really focus on customer service um, as much as they should. So focus on customer service, deliver good customer service. You'll feel good about it because it's the right thing to do. Um, you know, hire a VA just to answer the emails and, and, and overall, if you're going to scale, it's something that you need to do. You're going to minimize chargebacks, which will give you better, keep you in good health with your payment providers if you're not just doing Shopify payments. And overall, customer service is important. So make sure you do it. Social media, uh, just make sure you're posting on social media, you know, just to stay active. So it looks like you're an active brand, you know, um, just don't ghost to those things and then etc. whatever else comes after that. Um, focus on building a one product store over a general as a beginner, less to worry about, less to test, less stress, making that product awesome and making the whole store revolve around that product and making it dope is a better use of time in my opinion. Okay, so moving on to product selection. As you can see, the first thing I have there is perceived value has to be greater than the price for that individual. So what that means is whenever you run an ad for someone and they come on your store um, and they see your price, they that price has to be less than the value they think they will get from that product. Um, so it has to be worth it for them to spend that money that they worked hard for. Um, so for example, say um, I uh, was short, right? and you were selling uh, insoles that made you taller two inches. Um, and I saw the ad and out of curiosity, I clicked on it. Now I'm 6'1", I'm not short. Um, so if I saw the ad and I, I clicked on it and I looked at it, I'd be like, okay, well, I don't need this. I don't need to be taller, I'm tall enough. But for somebody that's say, for example, 5'5 five, five or 5'7 five, and they wish that they were taller, they would see that and the value, 50 bucks for those extra two inches is a, is a lot for them. That is, is you know, for to be two inches taller is totally worth 50 bucks. Um, but for me, that's a waste of money, I don't need it. Um, so say another, another example, someone selling like a, um, a product that solves your back pain or fixes your back pain, you know, maybe it improves your posture or something like that. Um, and say I don't have back pain, which sometimes I do, but say I don't have back pain and they're selling it for 40 bucks. Um, if I were to go on the website and I see it and it's 40 bucks, for me, there's no point for me to spend 40 bucks because 
Um, I only have a little bit of back pain. It's like, whatever, I don't need it. But for somebody that maybe sits down all day um, or they're an accountant and they have extreme back pain, like it's a problem in their life, 40 bucks is nothing. They could throw that away like, like nobody's business. And so it's worth it. So my point is the perceived value has to be greater than the price um, when it comes to product selection. And you have to pick a product that you can achieve that easily. So back pain is a very common problem. And that's why the posture correctors or any sort of the acupressure mat or the stress balls or any of those back problems, back problem products, um, they appeal to a lot of people. And so it's easy to sell them, right? Um, so that's something that you should keep in mind when picking a product. It should be able to, you should be able to convince people that um, you should be able to identify an audience that would find your product more valuable than the price you're selling it for before you sell it. So keep that in mind. Then you want at least two to four markup and then uh, of the cost of goods. So say for example, shipped to the customer's house is 15 bucks. You would want at least two to four uh, X of a markup in order to have room for ads and profit. What that means is multiply it two to four times. So if you were, you know, got it for 15 bucks and you're selling it for 60, that's a four X markup. So you're, you're timesing that by four and you're marking it up four times to get a $60 selling price when you only get it for 15, which is good. That's a four X markup is good. Um, but obviously you can't just be dumb about it. You can't just charge 10 X your, your markup cause nobody's going to buy it. So it has to make sense. I mean, that all depends on how cheap you get it, which ties back into getting the agent, um, which is why it's necessary to do that when you're getting orders. Uh, can't be convenient to buy. You can't just go and buy it from Walmart or Target. Um, you know, you can't just advertise a product that somebody, if they see your ad and they're like, oh, that's pretty cool. You know what? I do need that. Um, they go across the street and they get it from Walmart because they don't trust you. You don't want to do that. You want to get something that they can't buy from Walmart. Um, now, Amazon, people are more quick to Amazon because it's online. You could send it there in a few weeks. You could get all that done. Um, there's a lot of products that people sell drop shipping that can be bought on Amazon. But the only difference is they brand the products. Um, which balances out the trust factor. So Amazon's always going to have more of a trust factor. Um, but if you just have a general store selling a product that's sold on Amazon, Amazon will win. If you have a specific store that's branded with your logo and everything is lit um, and you're selling a specific product versus Amazon's general, it's going to balance out the two and people will still buy from you. Um, so Amazon is okay as long as you brand. Um, sometimes Amazon is a good way to see that a product is doing well. Must impress them or catch attention in some way. New creative, um, new creative makes life easier, solves pain, fixes insecurity. Um, something new, something cool, a gift that you can get makes life easier, right? Um, again, this ties back into perceived value. If it makes your entire life easier, how hard is it to fork up 50 bucks for a product? It's not hard. Um, because it makes your entire life easier um, and the perceived value is a lot greater. Uh, solves pain, same thing. Easy to fork up money for that. Fixes insecurity, again, same thing. Um, moving on, impulse or necessary. Um, those are kind of two different product categories. Are people either gonna buy uh, your product out of impulse because they see it for the first time and they think it's cool and they buy it or because they need it in their life and it's necessary and it will improve their lifestyle. Um, both works, obviously with drop shipping. I've done both, um, but impulse, I've noticed that you can't, usually charge as much um, and the most the highest product I've ever sold and it's something I'm currently selling uh, and it is an impulse product it's not gonna make your life easier it's something that you just buy because you like it or you think it's cool uh, and it's the average order value on the store is over a hundred dollars but it's an impulse product so it's difficult for me to get sales uh, to get impulse sales at a hundred dollars I have to convince the people that they actually need the product um, and depending on the people they do so something to keep in mind. If you could get both of these somehow, um, if it's a necessary product and it's not expensive, um, then you make serious money. If you could solve someone's confidence for $30, then you make serious money. If you could, you know, increase someone's height or I don't know, like there's a lot of insecurities, but, or acne, if you could make someone's acne go away for 30 bucks or, or for like 10 bucks a month, like Curology does or, or five bucks a month, I don't know. Um, or for, you know, for a kit for 40 bucks, then you make a lot of money. So that's when you can get like a lower price and a necessary product, that's when you, when you can do well. Um, examples, so teeth whitening, 50 bucks, um, white teeth and confidence. If you're a guy that struggles with girls, you can get more girls, that's worth 50 bucks. If you're a girl that struggles with guys, you can get more guys, so that's worth 50 bucks. Um, if nobody takes you seriously and you want people to, that's worth 50 bucks. If you need white teeth for a business meeting, um, if you get embarrassed in public, it's all worth 50 bucks. Um, height enhancing insoles, 40 bucks, worth much more to short people that wish they had more height. 
um, again, it's you know they, it's something that they wish they had. It's an insecurity that some maybe some short people have, maybe others don't. Um, and some short people would easily pay 40 bucks to, to kind of solve it temporarily. Um, active pressure mat, 30 bucks, severely decreases back pain. This is a mat that you lay down on and it's like acupuncture and it's like super sharp. Uh, it doesn't like puncture your skin obviously, but it like numbs all your nerve endings. I've tried it myself and it's crazy. It actually like takes all the attention away from like muscle pain and it just like focuses it on like skin pain uh, and it's painful but like your muscles don't hurt as bad um and obviously acupressure like that whole um, practice of medicine is is whatever whatever you want to think about it but it could be an exceptional product for people who have back problems back problems uh, and then manscaped i'm sure you guys have seen the manscaped ads recently um they're hitting confidence really hard like that's the angle they're going at right now um, and they're basically saying that if you don't shave like a man, then you're going to be laughing like a laughing stock and nobody's going to take you seriously. So they're hitting that insecurity angle pretty hard. Go check out their ads in the ad library. Moving on, um, here's a real one product, real example that I saw last month. This is pretty crazy. So a real element periodic table. Price is 70 bucks. So cost of goods, as you can see, I put here 20 on AliExpress. It's 35. Um, I asked my agent and he got it down to 16 and a half shipped to their house. Um, so 20 bucks, depending on who you go with. Um, so does it have a two to four markup? Yes, it does. Um, is it hard to find? Yes. And what I mean by real element periodic table, I'll show you in the next slide, but it's a, it's a like um, polyester periodic table with real elements inside that you can actually study. Obviously none of the radioactive ones, but just the real ones. Um, is it impressive? Is it make them wow? Yes, people see that for the first time and they're like, that's really cool. I would get that for my kids or I would get that for my kids, uh, my like students, if I was a teacher or something or a professor. Um, so yeah, impressive, very impressive. Uh, it solves pain, doesn't solve any pain, but does it make life easier somehow? It could, if you are trying to teach someone about the elements, it could make teaching them a lot easier and they could visually see it and learn about it better. So I didn't add that in here, I forgot, but could it potentially make life a little bit easier? Eh, it's kind of a stretch to say that, but if you are trying to teach someone about the elements, yes, it could. Um, greater perceived value than $70? Yeah, because when you buy it and there's like 50 real elements that you can just look at all day, um, that's worth it. That's that's pretty cool, you know? That's, that's a really cool thing to spend your money on. So moving on, here's the periodic table. I don't have the actual video. You can just go look it up, but this is an ad that I got hit with right about here as you can see this is the bitly link tracker and i got hit with this ad i want to say the week of august 18 i wish i could see the dates right about like here on this date um halfway into the second time they scaled so a cool trick that you can do which i'll show you in just a second is you could actually track the bitly link clicks if people are using bitly in their url but i saw this video and it wowed me i was like that's really cool and it had over 12 million views and they were promoting it um, they started promoting it one month, exactly one month, 30 days before the first day that I saw it. So what that tells me is 12 million views in one month means they scaled the living shit out of this product. Like they absolutely scaled the crap out of it. Um, and as you can see, what I guessed was completely right. So the bit.ly link in their ad, I copied it, which I have it right here. Um, so I'm going to copy it again. And then I just added a plus to the bit.ly link. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So as you can see, I just posted it. Uh, I just did it right now. All I did was I pasted the link in the uh, URL. I pasted the link in the URL and I added a plus, like the literal actual plus symbol. I'm not gonna show you because you'll see all my stores, but then uh, it brings up this page and you can see what they did. So obviously you could see um, they were not running ads on July 18th, July 19th, their ad had 2000 clicks. Um, so that's already a decent amount of spend. Then the next day, 14,000 clicks, then 19,000 all the way up to 36,000 clicks in a single day on an ad, which is crazy. Um, and then they went back down, uh, probably ran into some inventory problems or ad account issues with Facebook or some sort of issues here. Then they started up again, scaled it up super quick. Um, probably playing around with the price, trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, maybe that started getting expensive, but overall they shut it down. So they uh, got 600, 672 clicks in about 30, 672,000 clicks in about 30 days. Um, and let me tell you, that's crazy. So even if out of all those people that clicked on the link to the product, even if, um, 
you know, let's say only 400,000 of them um, actually viewed content on that. Um, the numbers are still insane. And I, um, my math was over half a million dollars. Um, so maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm not, but either way, if you guys know who sold this product, send me a DM. And That's gonna be it for this video, guys. Um, I hope you watch the entire thing. This is a very, very, very long video. Um, maybe I'll break it up into two parts, maybe not. But I hope that you guys enjoyed it. And if you guys want to leave me a suggestion for the next video, drop a comment down below. Send me a message on Instagram. It's at S-E-B-B. Send me a DM and also subscribe because it's free and I will be posting better videos as we go on. I hope you guys have a good day and I will see you guys all in the next video. Peace out.